I've gotten a few comments asking why I don't calibrate the replacement analog sticks, and to be honest, I never heard of such a thing simply because when I replace a stick, I find ones with near perfect resistance values. However, after looking into how others are calibrating sticks, I want to introduce a method that may be better and will allow you to calibrate the sticks well into the future, which will allow you to get rid of stick drift every time it happens. Before I show you guys my idea on how to get rid of stick drift permanently, let's have a closer look at what an Xbox One analog stick actually is, so we can better understand stick drift first. On the analog stick, there are two potentiometers. This is a potentiometer right here, and this is a potentiometer right here, or POT for short. To better understand stick drift, we have to know how a potentiometer works and what role it plays in stick drift. So, what is a potentiometer? In its simplest form, a potentiometer is a resistor, but with a third pin. This is the schematic symbol for a normal resistor. You know, this is a potentiometer. The only difference in a potentiometer versus a resistor is it has that third pin, which is called a wiper, which can be represented as this. Now, this is the schematic symbol for a potentiometer. So, on this potentiometer, this pin right here is the wiper, and these two pins are the resistor. That can be represented as this. So let's just label these one through three. This could be pin one, this will be two, which is the wiper, and this will be three, which is the other output. Now the overall resistance from one to three would be 10K on a perfect potentiometer. Now the wiper pin, which is represented as pin two, moves along the path of the overall resistance, which varies its output based on where it is. See, if we look closely here, you can see this black thing in the center right here moving left to right, with the, with the stick itself. Now that is the wiper moving across the resistance path inside of this potentiometer. Now that we know what a potentiometer is, we can understand how stick drift works. If the overall resistance from 1 to 3 is 10K, it's right to assume that the resistance from 2 to 1 or 2 to 3 when the analog stick isn't being touched should be 5K from 2 to 1 and 2 to 3. Of course, this is best case scenario, and when it comes to stick drift, these are the values you won't see. So if we take a look at this potentiometer's value, this is an analog stick I got out of a bad Xbox One controller, so we can go ahead and read the values of the bad pot on it with a multimeter. So from pin 1 to 3, which would be this pin right here, we would expect to see about 10K overall resistance. And instead we see about 9.5, which isn't too bad, but the problem becomes from the wiper pin, pin 2, to 1 or 2 to 3. So if we take a look at pin 2 to pin 1, we will see a high resistance of 5.5K. And if we look at pin 2 to pin 3, we will see a resistance of 5.3K. Now, believe it or not, that difference in resistance, although small, will cause your controller to have stick drift. So now that we know that the potentiometers are what's causing stick drift, in most cases, sometimes this shaft will actually not bounce back to zero, and that could be another reason as to why stick drift happens. Uh, but in most cases, it's usually the potentiometer being bad and just breaking down over time, or just being bad out of the factory. So how do we fix it? We could replace the analog stick, we could replace the potentiometer, or we could try to look for a perfectly balanced pot, which is what I typically do. Um, but I think there's a better way. Now let me try to explain it the best I can. So my penmanship isn't as good as Great Scott's, but bear with me. So if we look at the analog stick upside down, just like this, we can see that the potentiometer layout can be represented on this piece of paper, with the wipers being here. Shapes are hard. So on the Xbox One controller, we have this layout right here. Now, when they're soldered to the board, this pin goes to ground, this pin goes to ground, and this these two outer pins are tied to a positive voltage, just like this. So when you move your analog stick and you move your character in Call of Duty, all you're really doing is moving this wiper on the potentiometer either closer to the positive potential or closer to the ground potential. Now what that's doing is it's creating a different voltage based on where this wiper is, and that voltage is sent out through the wiper to the controller on the Xbox One controller, and that tells you know, your Xbox One where to move your Call of Duty character. Pretty simple. Now, let's go ahead and plug in our values for this bad pot, and I'll show you how we can fix it. If you remember, the overall resistance from this pin to this pin, say 
Let's go ahead and label them. So this is two. This is pin one, sideways, but you can probably read it. And this is pin three. The overall resistance was 9.5K. And while the analog stick wasn't being touched, the resistance from the wiper to pin one, I think was 5.5K. So let's just go ahead and jot that down right here. And the resistance from two to three was 5.4K, I believe. Or 5.3K, I just double checked. So from here to here was 5.3K. And this difference in resistance is what's causing your analog stick to drift just a little. So how do we fix that? Well, if we actually just use resistors in parallel, we can bring this resistance down closer to 5K. So if we just take another potentiometer and just use it as a variable resistor, not necessarily all three pins. So let's just put one lead going here and then the wiper lead going to the wiper lead on the potentiometer for the analog stick. And then we do the same for this pin over here. And then join the wiper to that wiper lead. Now let's just say these are 50k potentiometers because that's what I plan on using. I'm not going to jot that down because then the page will get too crowded. Now if we adjust the overall resistance of this potentiometer while it's in parallel with pin 2 and 3, we can actually use that parallel resistance to get closer to 5K overall. And if we do that for every potentiometer on the controller, that'll be two potentiometers per one potentiometer, four per stick, or eight per controller, which sounds like a lot, but I really don't think it would be. If we did this for every potentiometer, we can adjust each potentiometer for every analog stick to get as close as we can to 5K per output to wiper, meaning, uh, Technically, we can zero in on the potentiometer's closest value of 5K per output and then get rid of stick drift altogether. We're in Eagle now. I just wanted to recap what I showed you on the piece of paper, but in a more understandable format, which is Eagle. Right here, we have an analog stick. This is similar to the ones you'll find in Xbox controllers and PlayStation 4. It's the exact footprint of the one I was showing you in the previous clip. Both of its pots are right here. This is the Y axis and this is the X axis. Just like on the controller, we have one going to V plus. On each pot, one pin is going to V+, and the other pin is going to ground. Now, my mod is pretty simple when I show it in this format. We're taking four additional potentiometers, two per pot on the analog stick. We're going to wire up both of their wipers together. Then we're going to run that wiper, both of those wipers that are wired together, to the wiper of the pot on the analog stick. Now we're going to take the output from one potentiometer, and tie it to V plus and an output on the other potentiometer and tie it to ground. And we're just going to do the same thing for the other potentiometer. And that's pretty much the mod in a cleaner version. Now since these potentiometers are in parallel with this potentiometer, the goal here is just to be able to calibrate the resistance of the wiper for this pot and this pot to change the overall resistance of the wiper to its respective output. Hopefully that makes sense. I went ahead and soldered up this board of eight potentiometers. There's four per side, so four per stick, two per potentiometer. I'm saying potentiometer a lot and the word's starting to lose its meaning. So I'm gonna to try to refer to it as pot as well. So if we look over here, let's say these four pots are going to the left analog stick. So let's flip it over and see what's going on. Both of the pots wipers are tied in parallel for one potentiometer. So these two are going to one pot and that's represented right here. So this purple wire will go to one potentiometer's wiper on the controller and this blue wire will go to the other potentiometer on that same stick on the controller. And that is duplicated over here for the right stick. We have common connections in the setup. We have a black and a red wire now this will go to the positive voltage and this will go to the ground potential. There's no polarity so you can mix this up if you want, you're not going to do anything bad. And these four wires are going to go to the potentiometers wipers on the controller. So purple and blue will go to the left sticks wipers, doesn't matter which one. And yellow and green will go to the other sticks wipers, doesn't matter which one. And then we can tweak the resistance using a game tester or Call of Duty to see the change in value on screen. So let's go ahead and solder this up to our board. 
This board will be a fun candidate for this mod as it has a new stick with drift and an old stick with drift. Before we solder the pot board in place, let's see just how bad this board is. I launched a tester app and turned on the dead zone settings. The red circle represents the dead zone, and in a sense we will be using the pot board to bring that dead zone as close to center as possible while adjusting the resistance of the potentiometers on the controller. Now if I launch COD using this controller, you can see just how bad the drift is. I'm not touching the controller at all and the sticks are registering as if they're being moved. COD actually allows you to adjust for this in its own settings, but let's carry on with this mod as other games don't. After wiring the board up, let's launch the tester again. Using a flathead screwdriver, I turn one pot at a time and you can see the red circle on the screen move. What I'm trying to do here is bring that circle as close to center as possible. After the sticks are perfectly centered, let's go ahead and check out COD again. To my own surprise, there's no drift at all. This is with the dead zone settings off to maximize the effects of drift, and as you can see, there are none. Now let's make this pot board even smaller so we can place it inside of a controller. Now that we know the circuit works, we can downsize it using surface mount parts to make it easy to install on the controller. Surface mount parts can be soldered on through hole boards such as this one, but it takes a little bit of patience. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see this board as a kit in the future. For those playing along at home and want to copy this mod themselves and implement it into their own controller, I went ahead and made this simple schematic to represent the board I just finished soldering. It's very simple, it has the 8 potentiometers laid out as shown. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and walk through the wiring for it so you can go ahead and set it up on your controller. There will be a picture uploaded to Hackaday uh, with more detailed description of how this works or instructables, I haven't decided yet. But if it's not up by then, just go ahead and copy this, it's very simple. On the left side we have these four potentiometers, one pin of these pots is going to ground so they're all tied together in parallel going to ground by this flag right here. Now on the Xbox One controller you'll want to take this, this flag right here or this connection for ground and solder it to a ground point on the Xbox One controller. doesn't matter where you find ground, just anywhere is fine. On the opposite side we have uh, all these four pots wired in parallel from this pin going to analog plus. This is just going to a positive connection on the analog stick for an Xbox One controller. Just has to be one of them, not all four, just one. And in the middle we have our wipers for the pots tied together and these flags represent where they're going. If we look here we have a flag that's labeled LXW that stands for left axis wiper. 
this connection right here is just going to be soldered to the left analog sticks x axis wiper if that makes sense and the same goes for these ones right here so rw or ryw stands for right y axis wiper that'll be soldered to the right analog stick y axis wiper now you can solder these in any way you'd want um, i'd like to just keep them you know tied together for the analog sticks but it really doesn't matter where these go and there's no polarity for ground or analog just as long as you don't short them out so that is the circuit very simple let's go ahead and install this After mounting the board using some double-sided tape, I wired it up referencing that schematic I showed earlier. When I run mod wires, I try to keep them really neat and always avoid overlapping them. With the new pots installed, we will have to recalibrate them using a screwdriver to turn the pots and the controller tester app to reference the position. Fortunately, we're not out of the woods yet. After adjusting the resistance of the pots, we removed the full throw of the analog stick with the stick and the front shell installed. The right thumb stick needs to be modified by removing a small piece of plastic towards the right side of it, so when you throw it to the right, it will allow the stick to reach its max value by prolonging the time it takes to come into contact with the circuit board. The left stick doesn't need this mod since it isn't floating directly over a circuit board. Now we have to modify the front shell by expanding the holes for the analog sticks because the stick hits the edge before it can reach its max value. This is pretty easy to do with a Dremel and can be very smooth if you take your time to get rid of any imperfections. Every analog stick is different, so you might not even need to do this, or if you do, you might not need to remove as much plastic as I'm doing right here. This is all new to me, so we're just kind of working it out as we go. I still have some work left on this controller for other reasons, so I'm only going to assemble it enough to show them on working with the shell in place. Let's go ahead and check out some COD gameplay with Dead Zone turned all the way down. As you can see, there's no drift at all, and gameplay with it doesn't feel any different. I wanted to see if there was any noticeable gameplay defects with a normal shell and sticks, and it looks and plays like a normal controller, so maybe the shell modifications aren't needed, but I figured it was best to show a solution to that than act as if it wasn't a possible problem. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned more about stick drift. Now is this mod worth all the work? I guess that really depends on how much you hate stick drift, but it is pretty cool to have the option to calibrate the sticks well into the future instead of replacing the stick. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, go ahead and leave a comment with any questions. I'll try to answer them if I can, and I will see you next time.